and we are back here from the greatest city in all the world, Gary, Indiana. Still Gary, Indiana, folks. Mm -hmm. But shout out to all my peeps here in Northwest Indiana and South Side of Chicago. I know people, my peeps in Chicago can listen because I've heard people say they can listen from the South Side of Chicago. So Pete, shout out to them too. Peace to them and everybody in the region. Rev. Sir. Yes. Our mayor, Jerome Prince, is running for re-election. Okay. Yes, yes he is. So he announced uh, very recently that he is running for re-election and he uh, touted his uh, navigation of the COVID-19 pandemic um, and how he has allocated, allocated much of the $80.3 million of American Rescue Plan Act money that the city of Gary was awarded. He has uh, bragged about demolishing abandoned buildings throughout the state city and launching a youth summer employment program now he has said that he the city is working towards becoming a technology hub hmm. right in november the state named gary a broadband ready community a designation meant to encourage investment in broadband infrastructure the city has also launched a five-part broadband equity initiative aimed at increasing internet speed. Thank God, man. Like, seriously, we definitely need to uh, increase some of these internet speeds. Mm. Uh, the year the city added 10 new police officers, as well as six reserve officers, and invested 1.8 million in the Gary Fire Department. Um, we also launched the Operation Safe Zone Security Initiative and most recently, we did uh, appoint a new interim police chief, Indiana State Police Major Jerry Williams. Now, the mayor has announced several new pro several uh, new projects planned for 2023, including the Tolleston Opportunity Hub. And uh, over announced over the summer, the thirty million project, thirty million dollar project is a partnership among Methodist Hospital, the Dean and Barbara White Family Foundation, Crossroads YMCA, and the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Northwest Indiana. Uh, the Opportunity Hub will be built at the Gary Branch of the Boys and Girls Club, located in the former Tolleston Middle School. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club has been at that site since 2013. While nothing has been finalized, the current vis vision includes a 50,000 square foot addition that will house the YMCA and Methodist. The Boys and Girls Club building will also be renovated. The YMCA would include a pool, an indoor track, cardio fitness center, a teaching kitchen, community rooms, basketball and pickleball courts oh my god not the pickleball mm, it's everywhere oh god jesus um and licensed early learning academy for children aged 13 months to five years the y will also have spaces for cycling aerobics martial arts and dance classes wait wait, wait a minute yes <laughs> not the dance but the they're gonna have something for for babies yeah they're gonna have wow. an early learning academy for children 13 months to five years. Uh, then, when I was a kid, yeah. I think you had to be at least, what, six or seven years old to get a membership to the Y. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it was the boys. All I remember was there was, you couldn't, you couldn't be like four years old. Right. And, and, be and a member. the Y. Wow. Yeah. And Methodist will also have a 10,000 square foot space within the addition that would feature a healthcare clinic, a radiology lab, and a pharmacy. Goodwill okay. has yeah, has offered to provide adult education services at the hub. He is also working with the Gary Housing Authority to create a new home ownership program. He said that only 11% of the city the city's current housing stock was built after the 1980s, a statistic he hopes to change by creating new housing options for existing residents. Okay, Rev, let's get down to brass tacks. Exactly. Do you think that he deserves a second uh, a, a second term? And 
Do you think it's likely that he will win a second term? Okay. <laughs> On the one hand, I don't think anybody could do the work of a city or a state or even the federal executive branch in one term. Right. You pretty much need a couple. Because your first term, you're learning the job. Right. Nobody who runs for office other than the incumbent actually knows what the job entails. Right. So you got to learn the job first. Mm -hmm. And then you start doing the job. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, yeah, I guess he deserves a chance to, you know, try to actually do what he has in mind to do. Um, but at the same time, politics is not about what you deserve. Right. It's right. about what you can convince people to sign on to. Mm -hmm. And so that involve that means you got to develop a rapport with people, mm -hmm. develop a connection with people. Um, if he succeeded in doing that over his first term, then he probably will win. Not that people don't like, you know, Senator Eddie Melton, for right. example. Matter of fact, I had people call this morning and say, you know, they were they were really uh, positive about Eddie Melton. Yeah, they really appreciated the work that he's doing as a state senator, mm -hmm. and their concern was him leaving that post yeah, to become so mayor might leave some significant work undone mm -hmm. down in Indianapolis. Yep, uh, we need executive personnel we need legislative personnel we need judicial personnel uh, all three branches of government need people who will you know do a good job in that position and and i don't think necessarily that the three branches i don't think necessarily because you're a good legislator it'll make you a good chief executive yeah. i don't think because right. you're a good chief executive it'll necessarily make you a good legislator mm -hmm. And I definitely think being a judge is its own set of skills. Right. It's one of the reasons why, remember, before Obama, nobody had come from Congress to the White House in, I think it was 50 years. I think mm -hmm. Kennedy was the last one before Obama to go from legislation, legislative branch to the executive branch. Right. Because most of our, our presidents are either presidents, I mean, not presidents, well, obviously presidents that get reelected, vice presidents, or uh, generals. Historically, right. they've been generals uh, or, or governors. They've been governors, generals, vice presidents, and obviously presidents being reelected. Most people who won our elect our, our uh, executive branch elections, uh, because like you just said, it, it it actually is a whole nother skill set. Just because you're good at getting things passed in say Washington D.C. or downstate in uh, Indianapolis does not mean that you're going to be a great executive. When they start bringing those books and you and you start opening up those books, you, you may not like what you see, and you may not uh, it, it may overwhelm you at on some level. Uh, me personally, I I think that much of Prince's uh, first term has been affected by something that happened right before he got in office, when uh, our last mayor. I believe, uh, and, and the Common Council actually changed something so that it, it, the executive branch had less power than it had in years past, and that sort of went went into effect while Prince was in office or right before Prince got in office. Um, and I, I think obviously the COVID nineteen pandemic is going to affect anybody's term. Anybody. I mean, it affected Trump's term. I mean, looking back now, Trump definitely gets reelected if it's not for the COVID pandemic, right? right. I mean, he was only 40,000 votes in about three different states from getting reelected anyway. Hmm. Like, a lot of people don't know that. It was really only North Carolina, Minnesota, and I want to say Georgia. It was about three states a combined 40,000 votes that could have swung the election for Donald Trump in the electoral college. And so the pandemic, just his, his handling of the pandemic uh, essentially sunk Trump. A, a lot of it was because in the early stages of the pandemic, 
he uh he at first like Trump was the first guy to take it seriously. A lot of people forget this now. He was the first person to take the pandemic seriously. He was calling it the China virus and saying, "Hey, you know, this is this virus is coming from China. This is going to kill us all." And people like Nancy Pelosi and Bill de Blasio in New York were saying, oh, don't listen to Donald Trump. COVID's no big deal. Go out to Chinatown. He's just being uh, xenophobic and, and dogging out Asian people. Well, it turns out COVID kind of was a big deal. Mm. Then he switched over. What happened was his friends in the business community said, oh, my God, you know, these lockdowns and stuff are affecting us. So you got to open everything back up. And then he goes, Oh crap! Right, right, right. No big deal. Everybody go back. Everybody go back and live your lives. And so that kind of cost Trump. But in terms of Jerome Prince, you know, he was here. It, it happened right after he got in the office. Right. At least Trump got. Uh, Trump had from 2016 until uh, 20. I want to say 2016 to 2020. It, it happened yeah. towards the end of his his first term. Well, what would have been his his first term. Um, so he got to have all of 2017, 2018, 2019, three years, basically, and the beginning of 2020, and as you know, we could sort of see what he was going to do. Tr- uh, Jerome Prince, virtually the his second month in office, the pandemic happened. Yeah. And so, uh, obviously, I don't know if we can necessarily just merely judge him uh, operating on those scale, that, that scale, uh, per se. I will say that he has been helped massively by that injection of eighty point three million dollars. Exactly. He so so it's kind of cut both ways because he been it went for that eighty million dollars, uh, especially after that Acumen deal and. Mm-hmm. and he'd some... be he'd be in the struggle. <laughs> oh yeah. He would be in the and and here's the thing, um, it, it also kind of reminds me of the situation with the school corporation. Um, when uh, the when Duhab and and uh, MGT talk about how you know they've managed to balance the books and so on and so forth, uh, COVID was the gift that keeps on giving mm. for a lot of lot of these state agencies, uh, local agencies, federal agencies. The money that was printed and poured out uh, helped a lot of people's budgets. Yeah. You know, we got a little, we got the crumbs that fall. Those of you that got that three hundred dollar check, you got the crumbs that fall from the table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the governments got huge. I mean, look, all of a sudden it was almost like Christmas for them. Right. Whatever thing they wished to be able to do, they now had the resources to do it. So now the question becomes: Okay, when you were placed in a position where basically the spigots are open, you can get as much money as you need to do whatever it is you want to do. What did you do with the money? How efficient were you with that money? There were some, and the problem is because it was a a new situation for all of us, uh, I don't think we've really been contrasting and comparing what you know various communities did. You know, you don't really see many articles talking about what various uh, cities and towns and states and such, how they spent that money. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, that, that is a skill, right. knowing how to allocate, knowing how to prioritize. I, 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 I do have some questions about what the priorities of this administration has been, mm. you know, with regard to that money. Uh, and, and it's only because from my, from me looking at it, when I look at what are the basic fundamental needs of this city and then this sum of money comes in whereas before I was going to try to address these issues with what I had Mm -hmm. but now I've got I've got all this extra money and while I can't always use that money directly for these purposes but I can use that money for other things and then take the money that would have gone to those things and put it to these things. Right. And so if it were me sitting in that situation, I, I would definitely make sure that police and fire was brought up to the standards that I've, I've already determined they need to be, that probably right. I've campaigned on getting right. them to. 
I would have did that first and foremost so that when the next four year terms came up, the first thing I could say is, look, these streets are safer. Right. Now, he did, like I said, he did add 10 new police officers as well as six reserve officers and invested about $2 million in the Gary Fire Department. Mm-hmm. And they launched Operation Safe Zone and they hired the new pol- the interim police chief, uh, Indiana State Police Major Jerry Williams, who I think is just supposed to be transitional, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So he has done that. So if he can make the argument that, look, um, I took care of this issue that's been near and dear to you all's hearts for a long time. You all have been complaining about this, this issue. I took care of it. If he can say, okay, you all have been com- talking about how the streets are falling apart, oh, I yeah. took care of it. Mm-hmm. You've been complaining about the lack of uh, traffic enforcement, I took care of it. Mm-hmm. And while I was doing that, I also addressed some of these other issues. If he can't make that case, then they're not likely to vote for him. Right. But if he can make that case, and here's the other thing about it, if if Senator Melton loses this race, he still got his his other job. Yep. So he if he loses, he loses nothing. Right. If he wins, now we've got to replace him. Mm -hmm. I I absolutely uh, agree. Uh, I do like uh, the fact that he has brought, he he has focused on bringing the the broadband speed up. Like I said, this this city definitely needed to increase its internet speed because it has been terrible over the years. I'm curious about that. Right. Um, Because I moved here in... 2016. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I know, I mean, I listened to the commercials that Xfinity has about, you know, their internet. I've got as fast as you can get. Mm -hmm. Something like 1,200 megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. That's as fast as, that's as fast as they have. So, but at the same time, I know that uh, apparently none of the companies that are in this area have been investing in fiber optics yeah. uh, until, you know, since his election. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why they needed his permission in order to, you know, upgrade their their stock. Right. And, and Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the, the city stuff, too, like City Hall. Uh-huh. Because you know, I have to uh, play the uh, common council right um, uh, meetings, uh, and man, up until fairly recently, like it was, it was very hard. Like you could tell they were struggling with the uh, the speed of their uh, their uh, the uploading mm-hmm. when it comes to the, the when it came to playing those things live. That's why I stopped playing them live. I don't play the the meetings live. I get the one from the night before and play Mm -hmm. that because, geez, it was awful trying to play it live. Oh, let me get this caller really 